Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. We are going to tap tonight into deep riches of eternal life. He who was the Son has eternal life. He who was the Son has eternal life. I have the sun, so I have eternal life. He who has the sun, go ahead and pray. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord God Almighty? Is the Lord God Almighty? My life is full of your glory. My life is full of your glory. Keep praying. And the people say, Holy, holy, holy. Holy, ah. holy, holy. Holy, holy. holy. Holy, 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 holy. You're praying to open up your understanding. You're praying for the sake of your destiny. You're praying for the sake of the assignment that is set before you. One of the mysteries of the kingdom is about to be unveiled. My life is about to change. Thank you, Jesus, for your word comes. Hallelujah. Please sit down this grace called favor i do not mean to be arrogant and forgive me if you ever perceive that there is any communication that represents or connotes arrogance we are all products of god's mercy and grace but i will tell you one truth and i do not mean to insult your pedigree this for some reason it's about the hardest of the graces that I have seen as far as receiving this grace that God has placed upon my life and upon this ministry is concerned. I have seen people receive the grace for the prophetic so easily. I have seen people receive the grace for the miraculous so easily. I have seen people receive the grace, uh, dimensions of the anointing, the presence of God, revelation. But when it has to do with this grace called favor, I do not know why it has been so difficult. And this is not just my experience alone. I've had the honor and the privilege to interact with great, great men and women, veterans of the gospel within this nation and around the world. And for some reason, there seems to be the same complaint that it seems as though those who sit under this anointing for some reason 
are not able to receive and to replicate this grace and i'm praying that this case and this narrative will change tonight God is the all-wise God and in his dealings with men, please pay attention, I'm teaching now. Man, man by default, listen to me, man by default, by reason of the fallen nature and by reason of the limitation that our humanity brings to us, man is limited, grossly limited, more limited than we will ever imagine and so as you sojourn on earth as you walk on this earth attempting to live out your destiny and your assignment sooner or later you will realize how limited we can be no matter how well-meaning we are no matter how sincere we are man by default is limited he is not limited because he is evil necessarily he is not limited because um because he's 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 bad or whatever it is no 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 the same limitation happens to good people and bad people the same limitation happens to selfless and selfish people there there are different shades of limitations that are upon us by reason of wearing this mortal body you have to be aware of this and so god in his wisdom and in his love designed several systems of advantage this is what i call them systems of advantage that if and when the saints access these systems of advantage they can begin to turn an ordinary limited believer into a sign and a wonder please pay attention that means that outside of the influence of these systems of advantage nobody has the hope of finishing strong and living the fullness of your destiny in Christ the advantage that the believer has listen to me the advantage that coming into the faith life provides among many other things is the the access to these systems of advantage so if you get born again say at age 40 it's going to take you already time is against you is that true congratulations for coming into the kingdom but time is already against you because the unit of destiny is time and if you get born again at age 40 think how long it's going to take you to argue about the ministry of the holy spirit until you finally open up your heart to him embrace the word of god and now begin to learn the foundational rudiments of the gospel by the time you gain any level of maturity at all pending on the pace of your passion it may be five ten years down the line then now understanding your assignment and beginning to live it out so by that that the fact that you got to know god late already puts you in a disadvantage so god brought into our christian space systems of advantage like speed so that there is a possibility that under normal circumstances it will take you 10 years to know god and live out your destiny but that there is a condition that can be introduced in your life that within one two years you will catch up with those who have gone 10 years ahead of you it's called speed are we together now yes systems of advantage a woman for instance respectfully speaking who may have been trusting god for a child and she's 10 15 years down the line no child now even if she gives birth to a child how many years would she take in training that child or those children to now become adults and become mature if she's supposed to have a child one 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 space within two or three years it's going to take that woman a long time so God can introduce something into that condition that one woman can have triplets or quadruplets you see that one is not delivery that is restoration because God took 10 12 years and put it in nine months it's more than just celebrating the arrival of multiple children God is making a statement by that miracle that you can have dominion over time 
are we together now everybody says systems of advantage yes sir you have to know the implication of being a child of god being a child of god has implications and one of those systems of advantage that was put in the life of believers for our profiting to help us maximize our destinies in christ is a grace called favor hmm. that life by default is cruel life by default is imbalanced life by default can be can be viciously unfair favor becomes the equalizer favor becomes that which brings your life to balance are we together now this grace called favor i already shared with you my experience and let me give honor to many many people but two great people that were used by god very mightily to influence my life and to be conduits for the reception of this grace number one i honor him and i thank god he's alive and i pray he gets to hear and know this dr mike mudok he is one vessel that god used to communicate and help me understand this grace called favor the second that i must give honor to and i've stated it here is pat robertson Christian Broadcasting Network, 700 Club. It was a prayer. I listened to a broadcast where he was narrating the story that as a young minister about to start ministry, he went to God and prayed. And he said, Lord, give me wisdom. Number one. Number two, give me favor. Number three, give me the anointing of the Holy Spirit. I went back and I prayed the same prayer. Lord, give me favor or wisdom give me favor and give me the anointing of the holy spirit and like jabez god heard my prayer and the rest today is history history that glorifies god history that brings glory to the name of the lord exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 we're going to read two scriptures and then i'll begin to share this deep kingdom mystery let's read together in concert ready one to read and I will give these people favor, please read, in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. Please read it one more time. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty so you can know that favor is upon you and you can know when favor is not upon you scripture number two exodus 11 and verse 3 exodus 11 and verse 3 ready to read again thank you for your patience one to read and the lord gave the people favor in the sight of the egyptians moreover the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servant, and in the sight of the people. Stop. We're going to read it one more time. I know you read it from your mind. Now look at what you're reading and just pay attention to the power of what you're reading. Ready? One more time. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Then he isolates one man and shows what favor can do he says moreover the man moses as a result of that favor was very great in the land of egypt number two he was very great in the sight of pharaoh's servants number three he was very great in the sight of the people favor hmm. what is favor um, let me let me just just pause before you write I think one of the reasons why many believers have not come into the reality of favor 
the mainstream definition of favor now i i i, I don't mean to to downplay or insult the fact that there have been many imbalances as far as the teaching of favor is concerned and that is largely the reason why many believers have not been able to step into the experience of favor the definition itself for most of you if i ask you please define for me favor what you will usually say is favor is unmerited access is that true you are not wrong, but you are largely incomplete. Favor is a grace that is multidimensional. You see, unmerited access is just one of the definitions of favor. And the very fact that you believe that favor is unmerited is the reason why we may never receive it. When you tell believers favor is merited, they say, no, 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 no. Favor is not merited. And because we have an idea that favor is unmerited, we feel there is nothing to study about the dynamics of the operation of favor. If something is unmerited, why should I go so far to study it? Let me tell you by the authority of God's word, favor is merited. Favor is multidimensional in its operation and it's just one dimension of favor that appears to look like unmerited favor or unmerited access. That is when it has to do with salvation, the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ. Any other dimension of favor is merited. To just believe that favor is unmerited looks like a very sincere communication but is destructive many believers have been unable to step into it you cannot call wisdom unmerited people know that wisdom is merited so they pursue it they learn everything to learn about wisdom so the first thing we have to correct in love tonight is that favor is merited favor is merited to call the entirety of favor unmerited access is not exactly right so let's divine favor i'll give you a few definitions number one favor is divine help divine assistance favor is divine help divine assistance god in partnership with men God in partnership with men providing help and assistance to one's life and destiny favor is divine help divine assistance God in partnership with men providing help providing assistance to your life and your destiny please write it down divine help divine assistance are we together so when god graciously participates in your life your success your destiny and now coordinates men to also support the course of your life and your destiny we say you are favored and I told you favor is not unmerited. Favor is merited. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15. Here's the scripture that the Lord gave me to deliver me from that understanding that favor is unmerited. Please read with me if you're a child of God. Ready? One to read. Good understanding giveth favor, but the way of transgressors is hard. One more time. Uh-huh. Now, please keep that scripture there. I understand this scripture to be in... Um, it's, it's like two women who are both pregnant. The name of the first woman is called Good Understanding. And this woman is pregnant. When she gives birth to a child, the name of the child that comes from her is called Favor. Are we together? On this other side, there is another woman who is also pregnant. Her name is transgression. 
she gives birth to a child the name of that child is hardship so both favor and hardship are children that come from mothers one mother is called good understanding one other mother is called transgression you know what transgression is violation of patterns so this mother called good understanding can give birth to a child and we call the child favor this other mother called transgression can give birth to a child hardship has an explanation it's not just a sociological phenomena it's not the absence of privilege and advantage hardship now it's a very uncomfortable truth because when you talk like this many people get offended especially those who may 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 seem to be going through all kinds of problems whether financially and all of that but you must be open-hearted let god be that's the way of the transgressor is hard this is very very powerful many believers have refused to embrace this grace called favor and they have been limited as far as their divine assignment is concerned and i'm praying that god himself will help us to really really understand how favor works write this down favor truly is the number one reason why people succeed in the kingdom the favor of god is the number one reason why people succeed in the kingdom when jesus came and walked in the flesh luke chapter 2 and verse 52 jesus himself can you imagine this jesus the word of god the logos of god had to contend for favor to excel in his assignment and jesus increased the bible says in wisdom jesus increased in stature and jesus the word of god needed favor to fulfill his divine destiny he increased in favor with god and man now this automatically tells you there are two levels of favor there is favor with god and there is favor with men you can have favor with god and not have favor with men if you have favor with men with god you will have encounters angelic encounters you can even go to heaven and come back but you will suffer in this life for sure because the earth has he given to the sons of men many people have favor with god access to illumination understanding of scripture but as far as excelling in life and destiny is concerned they do not understand the dynamics of living in this earth and in this realm you need favor both with god and man we see the use of the favor with men when jesus needed a donkey for his triumphant entry it was because of this grace called favor upon him he says go and lose that colt and if any man asks you tell him the master had need of it brothers and sisters if jesus did not have this grace called favor he would have been surprised what the owner of that donkey would do are we together yes sir favor every testimony of victory and success in the kingdom is connected to favor every testimony of victory and success in this kingdom is connected to favor please write that down it's very very important every testimony of victory and success in this kingdom is connected to favor please write this down in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters these are very powerful kingdom points that you must note that in this kingdom who hates you truly does not matter but who likes you matters a king hates one woman called Vashti and she loses her throne immediately. The king falls in love with a woman called Hadassah, Esther, 
and from a young village girl she rises almost immediately to become king, queen the king loves a man even though that man was against the purposes of god called her man he hated god and hated the jews but simply because the king loved him he remained in the palace and he had dominion the day the king hated him even if he repented he would still go out of the palace he will serve the god of the bible outside the palace are we together now a woman called ruth meets a great and a noble man called boaz and he loves her and in a moment her life is changed for 430 years this cruel beast of a king called pharaoh all kinds of pharaohs came and left oppressing god's people and suddenly god placed this grace upon the nation of israel and the same pharaoh who oppressed them the bible says he gave them so much gifts they were in a hurry to go out they did not even allow their cake to the door to rise who likes you in this kingdom matters write this down all blessings come from god through men to men this is a powerful spiritual information please pay attention these truths will help you to excel and serve the purposes of the kingdom and to live a very victorious christian life while living out your destiny understand this all blessings come from god but they come through men to men when god says yes and the helpers of your destiny say no the answer will remain in the realm of the spirit it will not manifest in this realm believe me hmm. if you say all i need in this life is god and you're saying that to mean my allegiance my love my passion and my commitment is to him you are right but if you say all i need in this life as far as the dynamics of success is concerned you are very wrong even god needed men you asked the angel what he was doing searching for women with wombs jesus wants to come on earth he's trapped in heaven until a woman donates her womb look at how the angel came to explain it as mighty as he was the word remained in the realm of the spirit and the angel came and said mary you are highly favored this is what will happen to you she said explain it to me do you know the same question mary asked was the same question zechariah asked they punished one and left another because zechariah was not highly favored but mary was highly favored two of them asked the same question when zechariah was asking the angel explain to me the dynamics of my he said she shut his mouth and yet mary said how shall these things be and the same gabriel said let me tell you the power of the highest what kind of unfair thing is that but remember he started by saying you are highly favored so anything is with respect to that grace ask your questions because it's on you sit down sit down please pay attention don't be distracted if you are distracted it's an attack if you are distracted it's an attack god has something to say listen god has something to say listen listen pay attention for god has something to say so he said the power of the highest will come upon you she had to give the angel permission be it unto me according to your word and the word became flesh you will be learning in the course of this teaching that there are people on earth who are uncastable you can't cast them if god wants to help you he will make them favor you that's how you pass through that gate listen <laughs> believers may god have mercy on us and deliver us from ignorance there are many believers suffering today because the wisdom and the understanding that makes for living and excelling in the cosmos is largely absent 
And so we continue to pray in tongues, fall under the anointing, and find out that we are failing woefully in life because the dynamics of understanding how to live within our sociological context is not there. This is why God brought the church as an advantage to society. Are we together? Yes, sir. This world you see is the world of men. And if you do not understand the dynamics of favor, you can be called of God, you can be anointed having encounters in the secret place, but you will be surprised that you may never live out your destiny. Favor. Every result you see in this kingdom is tied to favor. Every. Are we still together? Please write this down. You need favor to achieve your goals and fulfill your divine destiny in Christ. You need favor. You need favor to achieve your goals. You need favor to fulfill your divine destiny in Christ. How true this is, especially because of the times that we live in. You need favor to achieve your goals. You need favor to live out your divine destiny. What is favor? Favor is when God raises men to invest their time, invest their resources, invest their credibility over your destiny. When God raises men to invest their time, invest their resources, invest their credibility. Look at me, believers. Do you know most of the things we pray for, the answers are not coming from heaven. The answers are already on earth. And most of the things we pray for today, most of them are men dependent. The prayer requests of many people are on the tables of certain individuals on earth and even in this city. It is within their power. Literally, one signature sustains the power to turn a man's life around. It is true. How many great men and women of God called and loved so passionately by God who love God with all their heart but they have not submitted themselves to the spiritual intelligence accessing this grace to excel in life and ministry I have met anointed men and women on earth I am telling you I have met anointed men and women in this nation and I look at their life and I see their sincerity and passion for God. But I can look and with uncanny, uncanny precision, I can point the gaps, the absence of the graces in their lives that should work in synergy to produce an enviable destiny. One of them being favor. Many of you are very hardworking. You are sincere. You love the Lord. Many of us have seen our loved ones very hardworking. It is the absence of favor that has led to this statement, life is unfair. You hear people say so, life is unfair. Mm. Are we together? I have seen the advantage and the blessings of carrying the grace for favor. And there is a disadvantage. There is a serious disadvantage if you do not carry favor. Let me be honest with you. In this life, I have discovered and I keep discovering as God helps me to advance in my life and God helps me in leadership and ministry. I have found out people really don't care about you. This is a very painful revelation. It takes a long time usually for people. People don't care about you at all. They are, they are passionately obsessed with making a meaning out of their own lives. So whatever will make them leave their own affairs and zoom their attention to you has to be divine. Listen, most of us have this superstitious idea that just because I love God, everybody will shut down on their destinies and just pay attention to me. No, sir. Apostle, the other day I sat in church and someone was looking at me and smiling. My brother, as he was looking at you, he was thinking about something else. I can almost tell you, you are not the one he was looking at. I'm not being sarcastic. Have you seen people talk and walk and you think they are talking to you? But they are talking about themselves. 
how is this rent going to come? He said, sorry, I'm not talking to you. I'm discussing something serious. Listen, do you know why I'm teaching you this? It's not just to laugh and to scorn. If it is true that your success does not just depend the dynamics of the manifestation now, it's God in partnership to men to, hate, to make it happen. And these men are currently distracted pursuing their own destinies. That what do you think will make those men to leave whatever it is and then turn to you and give you dedicated investment of their time, dedicated investment of their resources, dedicated investment of their energy, allow you to climb and leverage upon them? I was preaching, come Sam, I was preaching years ago and a man of God preached before me and he shared a story that I found very, very powerful. Pay attention to the story. This is what he said. That there was a senior advocate, I think in this country or so or around the world, very senior, senior legal practitioner, very wealthy, very successful, influential, one whose name is a key. You know, names can be two things, keys or padlocks. <laughs> but this one, his name is a key. And there was this young lawyer who had tried and tried, tried to set up his firm. It failed. Tried, very sincere, smart gentleman. Watch this. And he was really frustrated. And he went to God in prayer and said, Lord, change my life. Things have to change. And every time he would stand, he would see some of these top clients, institutions, running around to talk to that senior advocate to help them, you know, in, in, in all kinds of legal services. And these people would be bidding for millions, millions of dollars. And that gentleman felt life was so unfair. I'm just looking for a fraction of this thing. Look what they want to give this man and he's leaving them. And what kind of thing is this? When God wanted to help that gentleman, this is what happened. In the presence, I think they were at a conference and there were several people, businessmen, billionaires, other lawyers, the captains of industry. And this young man came and cried and said, sir, please help me. Please change my life. And the man said, okay, I will help you. And he said, follow me. And he came out of the veranda and everybody was looking at him. Oh, this is that our senior advocate. What is he doing with this guy? Then he began to talk with him. So how are you? How is your wife? And he said, sir, that's not the issue. I'm bro he said, just talk to me. And they were walking together. How are you? Are you eating well? Are you taking care? And he was angry. He was saying, sir, the issue is that I'm, I'm hungry. And the man said, he walked with him. And when he walked with him, he got into his office and said, if you still fail, don't come to my office again. <laughs> listen, listen. Do you know, you know what he was doing? People were saying, who is this man? Please sit down. Sit down and learn. You are in the house of God. The gentleman came out. True story. He was about to look for a bike to go home. And someone stopped him and said, sorry, I saw you with this man. Um, listen, listen. He did not even ask him if he was ill. He said, sorry, we've been trying to get him to negotiate a deal for us, but he, our rate, can we please, can we work with you? And he mentioned a rate that was a breakthrough. And the gentleman was wise to compose himself. Listen, true story. The moment he did that, God granted him grace, called some of his partners and worked together. And within a year, this gentleman got a gift and went back to the office of that senior advocate. He knelt down and said, thank you for changing my life. Then the senior advocate asked him, he said, do you know what happened to you? That's what I'm interested in. Keep your gift. You have to study what happened to you so that you will use it on others too. Favor is when an individual invests his credibility on you. Listen carefully. Who likes you in this kingdom matters. 
For many of us, we live in a world where the only thing we know is money. Once money is not in front of you, you don't care about any other thing again. If they keep money and they keep men, you will carry money and it will finish and you will go back to square one. There are seven currencies that we use to purchase realities in this kingdom. Everything is bought. There are seven currencies. The least of them is money. I pray for you, Koinonia, from the depth of my heart. May you never be so poor that the only thing you have is money. Yeah. Let me pray that prayer again. And I say it with every sense of responsibility. May you never be so poor that the only thing you have is money in your ATM. Yeah. Listen them. There are superior currencies. Money itself, you see, we have a series on finances coming. But money itself, you see, is a product. There is a capital that buys it. The name of the capital that buys money is what the Bible calls true riches. Money itself is a product. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Yes. If I want to buy this Bible, come, come, lift this up. If you want to buy this Bible, will you be offended if I bring out money just to use? Huh? Okay, watch this. Please watch this. This, for instance, this is a hundred dollar bill. Lift it up. Watch this. If, let's assume this is hundred dollars. People are following from around the world, so we're using something universal. If this if you want to buy this product, you need this. Is that true? So that means if I give you this, you start smiling because this is already a victim of the abundance of this. But if you want to buy this, what do you use? Because this is also a product. What do you use to buy this? Money buys this. But what if it is money you want to buy itself? What do you use to buy it? The one who is wealthy is not the one who has this. The one who is wealthy is one who has the capital that buys this. I've made up my mind to go God's way for the rest of my life. I've made up my mind. You know, many people believe that preachers are unintelligent people and when it has to do with salvation alone that they have something to say when it has to do with the matters that help people to excel and live a victorious christian life while serving the purposes of the kingdom with dignity and honor most people believe the house of god is not the go-to place it's a wrong narrative and i hope that by these meetings god is using it to he's changing our minds the church is not a nuisance to civilization. Please understand this. Not every man of God is moving around trying to look for money and manipulate people. There are people who fear God sincerely and intend to be contributors to nation building. Are you learning? Thank you. Thank you. Now listen. Pay attention. Favor. One person, write this down please. One person can be used by God to open a hundred doors of opportunity for you. One man can be used by God. Remember God has to be in the equation. One man can be used by God to open more than a hundred doors of opportunity for you. This is very, very important. When, when I realized, respectfully speaking, that I didn't have all the advantage that would be needed to serve the purposes of the kingdom effectively, it does not take money to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. It doesn't take resources. It doesn't take access. It doesn't even take influence. It just takes passion and hunger. Let me tell you where the challenge of many believers come from. The average believer usually gets born again, say, on campus or 
maybe while schooling is that true and as a student most times the emphasis is just on your spiritual growth and your academics you can't be talking to a student about you know accessing some of these things there may be distractions at that level so the only message is messages that relate to pressing into god depths in the spirit you know prayer and fasting consecration love for god and all of these things but sooner or later that person now becomes a family person there are real responsibilities that are now added is that true you will have to redesign your teachings as an effective man of god to do well to help the people remain spiritually in touch passionately in love with god but at the same time you must now supply them the keys that help them to excel in their career in their life while serving the purposes of the kingdom otherwise sooner or later they will be distracted by the need to make a living and they will leave the things of god it will cancel out all your investment of many years I can tell you one of the reasons why many believers are not serious with God is because they have not engaged these systems of advantage to help them be victorious. The Bible says, he that told you have asked for nothing. It says to ask that you should receive to the end that your joy may be full. Is someone following tonight? many sincere people in this country many sincere people around africa many sincere people in this city and probably many sincere people seated and listening to me desire to live for jesus desire to love him with all their hearts desire to serve the purposes of the kingdom in truth but that may not be possible until you access these systems of advantage when they walk in your life they now afford you the time listen ladies and gentlemen it takes time to seek god it takes time to teach your children the things of god it takes time there is so much distraction in our world today you can't lock yourself for two three days to say i'm seeking the face of god because there are bills society will call you irresponsible even though you call yourself a passionate believer I know many people who started well in ministry, many sincere people who love God with all their hearts. Some of them today are not in ministry because the needs and the cares of life just strangled away their passion for God. Respectfully speaking, some of us, you go and meet our parents at home and in the villages and you talk to them about loving God and having passion for God and they look at you and pity you so much. They say, listen, let me tell you, I was the protocol to T.L. Osborne when he came into Nigeria. So all these things you are doing, we did it before. Why should someone become that frustrated? Do you know there are believers today who are angry at God because it looks like he's calmed them? He gave them a proposal that they will have a victorious life. They left idol worship and left everything and came to him. And the only thing they caught was spiritual fire. Not accessing the systems of advantage in the kingdom will make God appear like a wicked and cruel and self-centered God. You see, the way preachers teach about God, if, not, if you do not understand who God is, your conclusion will be that God must be a wicked and a cruel king. Here's the proposition. Leave everything and love God. Doesn't matter what happens to you. Don't worry about it. You just focus on this God. He, he gave his life to you. Give your own to him in return. Sacrifice everything and love him. What about my children? Just forget about them. He will take control. You just keep praying and make sure you love the Lord. Now your children are saying, Daddy, this God you are talking about, is it that he does not see that we have needs? They don't worry. The most important thing is, I love Jesus with all my heart until children become teenagers teenagers become angry youth who help to kill you you come to them they say look i was a pastor's child don't you dare talk to me about this thing about god our world today has several options they if we do not teach these things in its entirety let me tell you we are going to lose a whole generation i assure you I need, I need to put things in perspective so you don't think we are just carnally talking about success and victory. There is nothing we are discussing that is in isolation to kingdom come. We are a people of vision, people who passionately love God. So everything we are communicating is part, is a subset, 
put together to make the believer become victorious. You ignore what I'm teaching you sooner or later. Sooner or later. You may regret it. I bow my knees to the Lord in gratitude today that when the Holy Spirit brought this dimension, in addition to my passion for Jesus, my loving him, which remains my priority in life and in death, that I did not ignore this other aspect. I probably today would have also been an unfortunate preacher, manipulating people. You think if I'm hungry and my needs are not met and hunger is pressing me indefinitely, and I have the prophetic and you are here? Oh, come on. <laughs> sit down, sit down. I am, I am by no means trying to insult the body of Christ, no. I am saying the systems of advantage are some of the sponsors of integrity. Please hear me. As a man of God, you do not know this and you do not learn this. You don't learn these principles you will be surprised at the things you will eventually do you may never believe that one day you can manipulate a rich man or manipulate someone oh i fear god with all my heart the day your wife gets on her knees and her children and say look i'm tired of this your thing the devil will come to you again i came to you 10 years ago you say i fear god now i've come to you in light of your needs I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever, Lord. I love you forever. I love you forever. Regardless your background, listen to me regardless the disadvantages that surround your life i introduce to you tonight a system of advantage there is a grace called favor it can come upon an individual it came upon an a, a villager called esther and took her from the village to the palace favor the lifting power of favor not even jesus disregarded it when he walked upon the earth and jesus grew in wisdom in stature in favor i've had the honor and the privilege of searching the life of our fathers of faith men who have run this race and gone before us and have found out that in all they are getting they did not ignore favor can i share with you a few keys as we pray because we are going to pray hmm. There are about four or five keys that I want to give you tonight that control and activate this grace called favor. And it is my prayer in the name of Jesus for you who are here and all who are following that in the name of Jesus you obtain grace to walk in keeping with these principles. This is the good understanding that brings favor. I assure you, many of you, you see, let me tell you, within a short time, you will be surprised to see the beauty and the glory that comes out of your life. And you see, the surprising thing is that your prayer life will not go down. No, you are learning God's way. The surprising thing is that your passion for God will even be ever increasing. Are we together? Key number one. The first key that activates this grace, this mysterious grace called favor in the life of individuals, the life of businesses, companies, politicians, businessmen, ministers of the gospel, churches, it doesn't matter who. It's a principle that works for any, everybody. Are you ready? Key number one, honor. The first key that controls favor is honor. Please write it down. Honor is the key to access. 
Anytime a door closes before you and refuses to open, I can tell you the name of the padlock that was used to lock that door is called dishonor. Let's define honor very quickly. What is honor? Honor is the discerning. Please write it down. Honor is the discerning, comma. Honor is the celebrating and honor is the rewarding of men for their distinctive difference. The discerning, the rewarding or the celebrating and the rewarding of men for their distinctive difference, their uniqueness is called honor. So real honor starts with discernment. All men are equal in Christ. The same Lord is rich unto us. But as far as the discipline of purpose, the sacrifice of destiny is concerned, all men are not the same. You must have the fortitude to recognize and to discern the difference. In the example I gave you earlier on, what, what, what do you think is the difference between the senior advocate and the young man who was about to start his law practice? I will tell you the difference. The difference is years of investing to build credibility. The difference is years and pain, years of mistake and the price that that senior advocate had to pay to learn. When you honor men, listen to me, it's not human worship. There is human worship which is wrong. But I can tell you this, great men are not great by mistake. They are testaments of endurance. We live in a world that has mastered the art of trivializing people. You see a wealthy man, you begin to curse him and say, wicked Nigerians, all of you just destroying our money. Yet that man was born and he slept under a bridge one day. You see a man of God who is anointed and blessed and God is showing him mercy. And you may say, I don't mind all these people, God just gave them grace and they are acting as if. Listen, Africa, we must learn this. Nigeria, we must learn this. The church, we must learn this. We are equal in Christ. But the men and women you see who are the gatekeepers today, many of these men, if they tell you their stories, you will end up in tears. Testaments of endurance. I was returning back from Lagos and um, the pilot that flew us to return, um, when they were introducing the man, they said this is an award-winning so, 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 and so, and so, one of the best and the finest in the industry. And when they said that, we were happy. When we lifted all through the flight and when we landed, even me, I clapped. I said, that man, truly, he deserves every accolade. You can see the difference. You can see the intelligence and the professionalism. Now, for someone, you say, oh, well, pilots are pilots until the other version of this excellence flies you. Are we together now? Yes, sir. God's grace, absolutely phenomenal people, custodians of wisdom, people who you enter their office and you see awards from one end to the other as if they are selling it, and every single one was earned, and yet they sit down very humbly, now, a wise person will quickly drop any man of God thing and say, Sir, what can you teach me within these five minutes? These awards are not a showcase. Let me tell you what most Nigerians will do. Is it just because you are lucky? What is award? Let me tell you what an award is. Award is a testament that you have paid the price and your world, even though selfish, they've been compelled to recognize it. Are we learning? Don't be offended. I'm a bit harsh. I'm pushing you for a reason honor the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding of men for their distinctive difference you hear me say this is a house of honor it is for a reason seated here 
the overflows and following online are thousands and eventually will evolve to millions of people some of these people are absolutely phenomenal people some of the people you may be sitting close to today by the protocol of their profession you may not even have the access to sit close to them is that true many preachers have closed the door of favor because of dishonor in as much as you are anointed remember you are captain only within your jurisdiction are we learning everybody say honor honor, honor is one of the mysteries that when you engage it will bring you favor almost immediately you keep insulting your boss this man is a stupid man as stupid as you think he is he, every year he's turning over in billions and he's paying your salary without fail yet you call him stupid every one of us under the sound of my voice I pray that God will grant you grace to have a renewed orientation today you can literally earn a living practicing honor that when people say, what are you doing? You say, I'm in real estate. What are you doing? I work with oil, an oil and gas firm. What are you doing? I practice honor. It's only a fool who will laugh at you. You can literally earn a living practicing honor. Honor is a stream of income. A stream of income that does not need capital to start. And yet it is marvelously fail-proof. Are we blessed? Oh no. You must discern. Never enter the presence of greatness and act as if you are not aware of it. No. No. As much as God continues to lift me when I step into the presence of great people, I'm not talking of human worship. No. That is wrong. But to give people an impression that, look, I am aware of your sacrifices. I am aware of all of these great things. One of the clearest expressions of honor is gratitude. Ingratitude is a display of dishonor. Someone pays your school fees, takes care of you, sends a million naira to you, and after two days you reply with a one-word text, thanks. Hmm. He pays another one thanks and it never comes again let me tell you it was not a spirit spirits take advantage of our disobedience and ride upon it to help us lock those doors i'm saying this to you because there are many of you today who have uncles and have people who in a heartbeat can open doors but you are surprised why they will not attend to you and you keep hearing that they are lifting others it is dishonor that has closed that door you keep having dreams and visions of yourself moving forward and excelling in life. Yet it never manifests because the conduit, the human conduit who should partner with God for your lifting, you have dishonored and closed that door. Let me challenge you here. Tomorrow is Monday. Work continues. Why don't you take it as a challenge and find something, maybe a bottle of wine or something. Go and meet your boss if you have access to him. And just, just greet him and just tell him, look, um, I just came to say thank you, sir. Thank you so much. It's been five years working with you or working with this company. And I have experienced phenomenal growth. I have learned. I have grown. And this is just me coming. I went to church and I was taught the value of honor. And I want to be a practitioner of the word. I just want to say thank you. Let me tell you what your boss will do. All right, all right, leave, leave, usually. But there is no man who has vaccination against honor. Nobody. There is nobody on earth who can resist honor. People will express it in different ways. The person looks at you and on that table he's deciding the next set of executives. There was one more gap left and he just sought his next executive. Your certificate will give you a job, but honor will guide your promotion. There is a realm you get to where everybody has the same qualification with you. The distinguishing factor becomes the practice of these mysteries. That's what gives you an edge. Are we together? Please say honor. 
practice honor practice honor the cheapest way to practice honor is thanksgiving discern and say thank you there are many men who never tell their wives thank you i don't mean to offend you but it's true thank you for what i paid her dowry there are many women who never tell their husbands thank you what for the bible says mm -mm, mm -mm. there are many children who never tell their parents thank you i didn't ask them to give birth to me see all those kinds of thinkings thank you learn it please don't just laugh learn it don't say thanks no it's a mediocre way of expressing honor Don't send people a text and say there are many people who have done well just to let you know you are one of them no when it has to do with communication of honor you give people a sense of exclusivity you are that valuable to me honor is the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding there are people for instance who have shown me honor in my life and by the honor they have shown subconsciously I have become indebted to them I'm not saying do it but I'm just telling you there are people who went that far look at Nicodemus you now know that even though they were not born again they were wise people he came to Jesus by night he didn't say sit down I am a Pharisee let's talk he said rabbi he never called him Jesus rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God forget everything we said in the afternoon we know it's just our job that makes us do that we know that thou art a man sent from God then he now says no man can do these things except God be with him and Jesus said you want my heart let's talk verily verily I say unto you he didn't even ask Jesus a question Jesus started talking read your Bible he had not asked a question yet you're Jesus verily verily I say unto you except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of God then he now said can a man enter he expressed so much ignorance and he said look Jesus this, this is intelligence and Jesus said let me now explain except a man be born of water and of the spirit he shall not enter the kingdom of God and then the wind blew it where it listed Jesus began another lecture same thing with the woman at the well have you noticed that honor is magnetic it keeps people within your vicinity it keeps helpers within your vicinity is the job of the Holy Ghost to send them to you is your job to work in partnership with him to maintain them never step into the door of greatness and allow that door shut you out no honor is what keeps the door open so that your children and your children's children can pass through There are people today when they endorse you even if you have an enemy who does not like you they are compelled to bless you because of the power of their sacrifice invested in their signature we have to hurry up are you learning the celebrating the rewarding of difference turn to the person seated by your left and right and tell them i honor you god bless you Feel embarrassed, but still do it. Just say it. Look at me. Let me challenge, let me challenge, let me challenge the young people in our nation and tell you why many people don't have doors. They come to you, usually once you are blessed, you have this plethora of relatives who are waiting angrily entitled believing that you owe them and then people just come in uncle how are you and they just bounce around and they are seeing people queuing your uncle is their ceo and they are respecting the person and you just bounce in and come in how are you and um uncle anything for the boys and he looks at you and just manages it gives you something and tells his pa any day you see this boy coming make sure you don't open the door again why because you communicated dishonor 
I shared with you, okay, I'm not sure I've shared it here in Abuja, a very true story. I went for a conference years ago and a man of God shared that story. Let me use it to wrap up this subject of honor so we'll move to the next point. True story. This man was seated. He was a pastor of a church and God was using him mightily. True story. But back at home, things were not working well, especially financially. Things were a bit rough. And yet he would sit down and the wife would sit down and they would hear testimonies of marvelous things that God was doing. Changing the lives of people and people would clap. But that man sat down there and there was fire on the mountain in his own house. One time during a service like this, the wife just got up and walked out of the meeting. The man was done, finished his counseling and ran back home. My wife, what happened? Did I offend you? Did I say something during the message? She didn't say anything. And then he sat at table to eat and he noticed that the plates that she was using to serve him, you know those women have those holy of holies plates that only come out when there's a triumphant entry so that <laughs> <laughs> praise the lord now watch this she brought those plates and served him and he kept asking what happened did i offend you we can talk about this she didn't say anything finally when she brought the last item kept it on the table she got down on her knees and she said servant of god my home is in trouble ah. suddenly the man said the same anointing he used to feel in the church came upon him on that dining table and he laid hands not now not on the wife that grace do you know because every time he was at home he was a husband so the anointing for priesthood did not find expression to bring breakthrough the woman was now wise and saying you are my husband but you are also a man of god today is not my husband i'm feeding i'm tired of feeding my husband and receiving compassion i need results so let me let me honor that guy. let me tell you this listen everybody you see is multi-dimensional the dimension you honor is the dimension that delivers to you your father can be a prophet and he can be blessing the nations and never see anything for your life. Your CEO can have a powerful signature that has decided the prosperity of institutions and yet you can be seated there and no door opens. He that receives a prophet in the name as touching the office of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. There are many men of God who don't even waste their time praying for certain people because they know by the spirit that they are not going to receive anything. The courage of pride that they bring. I'm not talking about kneeling down. You can kneel down and still be standing up in your heart. So I'm not talking of all those things. No. A settled recognition. Practice this and watch doors open for you. Practice honor go back some of you this night even though your parents may look aged they may not have money but they have grace mama just to say thank you thank you for the honor and the privilege every time something is about to happen to me you see it in your dream i don't trivialize that grace and they'll just say my daughter the god who helped me in my youth help you carelessly and that will be it Doors will begin to open for you at a frequency you may not explain. Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. 